Hi guys, it's me again, and uh, again, welcome back, or welcome to my channel, Cooking with Pouncy. Please hit the subscribe button if you like what you see, and if you like what you see, please share this video with others. So again, today I'm going to be making some uh, stuffing first, because I'm going to do some stuffed pork tenderloin, and I'll need for that, and I'll do the stuffing first. What I'm going to put in my stuffing is some mild Italian uh, sausage. Some, I think they call it sweet as well. I don't know why they call it that unless it's got a bunch of sugar in it. But anyway, this is mild Italian sausage, Johnsonville. Don't have to be Johnsonville, whatever you desire. I've got some butter. I've got an onion here. I've got a couple of uh, ribs of uh, celery. And I've got some stuffing mix that is cornbread. Yeah, oop, I got some stuffing mix that is cornbread. Sorry about that, guys. I've got some stuffing mix as well that is regular bread. Okay, I'm going to put a blend of, of, of the two in there. I might use a little salt, I might not, because my chicken broth also has salt in it. And I don't, perhaps I won't want to add more salt to this. And even this stuffing mix has salt in it. So I probably won't use that. I might use a little black pepper, maybe that's coarse ground pepper. And I think that's about all that I will be putting in that. But I'm going to, I, I want to dice this up because I'm going to make my stuffing. And I'm making about a half inch in each one of these, I think I'll use that onion. That's about a medium onion, okay? All right, and I'm ready to go with my dice. And all I gotta do then is go like this. Now, if you notice too, once I went down through there with the knife, just put my finger here to hold that onion, pull the knife out. Because a lot of times what happens is that onion will actually stick to, let me see if I can make it happen. There, that was some of it. Anyway, the onion or potato, if you're cutting potato, tends to stick to the knife. If you're not paying attention to what you're doing, now you got something stuck to the knife and you try to go back, you try to correct, you're gonna get your fingers cut. So I usually, again, I'm gonna try to make it stick. To, there it is, so it sticks, to, and that's why, again, that's why I just take my finger, go like that, and I can do that all day long, okay? All day long, just do that. So, uh, potato knives that have holes in them and they don't suction like that and stick to the thing, but I'm just trying to show you, you don't have to do that other process. To me, that's dangerous, all right? So you just do that and you get your dice, and it's dice, just like I wanted. I could have made it even finer. I could have made it really, really fine, almost like a, a minced onion, if you would, please, okay? So that's what you need to do for that process, and you don't. there's nothing else that you need to do in terms of that dicing. I'll be uh, doing this one up here, and let's do this here. Again, I'm squinting to see if you guys can see this. And I think, did I mention butter? I hope I did, for that stuffing, because that butter's gonna go in there, and I'll put this here, and... There's no real trick to this. I'm just going to cut the bottom off because I don't want the bottom of it. I'm going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to come over here and I'll do this. All right. And again, and I'm going to do this. And I think I'm, that's all the celery I'm going to put in there. So as you can see, I used about, uh, I used about a uh, one and three quarters uh, ribs of celery. So I'm just going to dice these up. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to saute these off, and not until they're soft, like the onions might be translucent a little bit. All right, and that's going to go in my pan for my stuffing. Look at I'm trying to pull a cutting board, and guess why it won't move? But you don't want it. You don't want it to move. All right. So I've got my 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 herbs cut up here, my onions and celery cut up here. And that's what's going to go in my pan with my butter. The butter's going to be the starter. Once that melts, I'll put this in there. And we'll get that done, and we'll show you that process. And Back up just a little bit here with this process, this saute in my vegetables and cooking off my meat and braising off my sausage. Um, I'm going to put the sausage in here now. And uh, I'm going to cook this off. Uh, that's about medium-high heat. And this, again, is Italian, mild or sweet Italian sausage ground. Um, and what I'm going to use here is a whisk like this one. This is my old beat up one that I use and the reason it's all beat up and I'll show you why it's all beat up. Typically use, even when I'm making chili, I'll use this flimsy one because it's flimsier and, and then I start to do this.
going to put in the onions and celery. I'm going to turn that down a little bit because it's just starting to cook. Right, so here's my onions and celery still that I chopped up earlier. And I'll just add those in there. Right. Still going to use my handy dandy little whisk here. And, the, and the, the little bit of fat that's in that meat is actually going to do what it needs to do with these onions and that celery. And the reason I'm not going to cook it any more than getting those onions and celery to just start to uh, get soft or onions to start to sweat, they're going to cook a bit more when you put it, in, when you stuff the stuffed pork beef. And when you put the stuffed pork tin on in the oven, those, uh, those uh, onions and celery are going to cook some more anyway. Okay? So, this is looking good. And in the meantime, um, you don't have to worry about overcooking the meat. You want that meat to get done. So don't worry about what if the meat gets done before the onions in. No, nope, don't worry about it. You want that meat to be done. The other thing I'm going to not do, uh, although I'm going to show you how to do that, how to stuff that pork, how to split them in half and make them ready to get stuffed, I'm not going to stuff those pork tenderloins yet. You don't want to stuff the pork tenderloins with hot stuffing. And this stuff is going to be hot, as you, as you know, when I'm do, after I get done doing this. I could have actually used that stove top stuffing just as it was, without putting anything in it. No, you know, no onions or celery or anything like that. Because that stuff is pretty good if you just add water. Well, of course, I'd never do that. It would have to be some sort of chicken base or, or something. And that's what I'm going to be using, too, when I want the consistency. And you'll see that as well. When I want, it's cooking really good now. When I want the consistency that I need for my stuffing, and you'll be seeing that when I use chicken stock to uh, to do that. I might have said chicken base. I use chicken base in my gravies and stuff too. So anyway, that's cooking pretty good there. And I'm going to take my stuffing mix. And again, I, I'll probably use about half of one, each one of those bags. I might even use the whole thing because I want stuffing left over. I can use it for other dishes, as you know. And so I don't have to be concerned about how much am I going to use. So I might wind up using the entire two containers of it. And I think they're both 12 ounces each. All right. So I'm about ready to do this mix, mixture of all the in ingredient stuff. And I'll be right back with you momentarily. All right. That's looking good, guys. It's looking good. It's smelling good, too. Okay guys, here we go. I'm going to, this is all done, all ready to go here. If you can see, if you can see that. Mm -hmm. That's smelling good, my goodness. All right, so I got that all ready. I'm gonna now add my stove top stuffing mix. This consistency is about the same as the, it's all like crumbs, it's almost, it's like the, uh, the cornbread stuffing as well. But this is regular bread stuffing here. Then I'm going to mix the two, is what I'm trying to say, I guess, here. So I'm going to use, uh, uh, I might use the whole can, but uh, let's start with three quarters of this can. All right, three quarters of that can. But I don't want a whole, whole lot. I'm going to stuff two pork tenderloins. And then this is the cornbread stuffing. Let's do, say, like half and half, okay, for now. And that's half of this bag as well. And then I might wind up using the whole thing here at the end of the day, at the end of the process here, okay? So, I've got my my two kinds of stuffing in here. I use half of each one of those bags. I'm now going to introduce this mixture to this. And I won't get by that burner because it's still really hot. Still trying to get used to my electric range here. We moved here not too long ago and I've been used to gas and now when I'm using electric, as you guys know, that burner stays hot for like a week and a half after you shut it off and it's still cooking. Okay, I was just kidding. It didn't take that long, but it's still cooked. So I can get rid of this hot pan. A little sink with hot soapy water. All right, so, so now we've got what I need in terms of what I'm going to mix this stuffing with here, okay? So I'm going to just start blending all of this together as I have to do in order to get it in here. And I'm being careful to watch my my ingredient, not just the ingredients, but the, the ratio, I should say, of my of my sausage and my other ingredients to my bread mix, okay? And I can see right now that I'm probably gonna put maybe the rest of that in here, all right? Because once I add my chicken stock, 
and get this to the right mixture of moistness. That's a new word I just made up. Um, then I'll be I'll be good to go with this whole process. So I'm going to get some chicken stock now, and I'll start folding it in. It's no need to be in a hurry. I used to do things in a hurry all the time and didn't know why, but I've been doing commercial food service for many many years, and we always had deadlines because. Lunch starts at 12, this starts at 2, this starts at whatever. So anyway, this is pretty dry, as you can hopefully see, as you know, because I haven't had any liquid yet. So I'm going to do that right now. And this is just maybe, this is even a, about a fourth. I've got another container here. But so this is about a fourth of this chicken stock here that I'm going to use for my, for my moisture. Please don't use water because you want some flavorful stuffing, all right? And again, that was about a quarter of a container. And I've got another one, full one here. And try very, very hard not to overdo it when you do the liquid because if you don't have enough crumbs, if you put too much in it or to absorb that, you've got some soggy, wet stuffing. So uh, you gradually, I gradually add it, add in my liquid. And as you do that, do it a little bit at a time because what's going to happen here as you pour it in there. And I, I didn't measure the other one. So that's like maybe, it's less than a half a container thus far. But I do that uh, so that that liquid will, excuse me, the breadcrumbs will absorb that liquid uh, as I pour it in there. But I'm not gonna pour it all in there at once. I'm just gonna let it do its own thing. And yes, every now and then here a little bit, I'll stir it, check the consistency again. Check it again to see how wet it is, if you will. And I'm kind of using my spatula, kind of pressing on it too. Once it starts kind of sticking together, you know it's a, it's got the kind of moisture content that you want. And again, I'm I'm thinking because this looks so good and it's so meaty, meaty looking, I'm going to put some more of that bread in there and some more liquid, just so I can have some left over, and I will have some left over for other and use it as a side dish for other dishes I'm going to be making as well. So that's looking pretty good, and. Uh, I'm just going to let it rest for a little bit. Again, let that bread absorb that moisture so I'll know where I am in terms of the moisture content and how I want it. And I'm doing this because I usually take it like this, and if it sticks together, that's fine. And again, remember, if you put too much liquid in there and you got your bread and now it's too loose and you might have a different consistency than you actually were, were going after to begin with. So that's why you, can, you uh, add your liquid slowly, let the bread absorb it. If it's wet enough, you know, put some, uh, not wet enough, you put some more liquid in there and vice versa, if it's too wet, you put some more breading in there, but don't overdo it because all of a sudden you run out of liquid or breading and now what are you going to do, okay? So, this is going to be really, really good. I've made it many, many times. I like what I see here for the consistency of it. And again, I didn't have to do anything. I could have just poured some chicken stock in that, in that uh, mixture, excuse me, in, the, in, the, in this pan, rather, and then stuff my pork tenderloin. But this is going to be really good because it's got that wonderful Italian sausage in there and, and your onions and your, uh, and your celery as well, okay? I did not add any salt or pepper to this stuffing, okay? What I am going to add that I forgot, and I can do it or not, I've added about two and a half tablespoons of butter that I just melted in the microwave here because I typically put a little bit of butter in it as well. Hope you can see that. I just put a little bit of butter in it. And that's a tablespoon and a half of butter that I melted, like I said. And I put that, and I'll fold that in. And because it adds a little extra flavor, and again, I'm going to mix that in there too. A little extra flavor. This is some good stuffing. And I know there's many different ways to make stuffing. And when I make this stuffing, I have people saying, will you please bring me some of that stuffing? And I'll do that with this batch as well. So that's all done and actually ready to go in my, uh, I think I showed it to you earlier, and ready to go in my stuff, my pork tenderloin, so as to create that stuffed pork tenderloin. And I'll be saying that's the consistency of it. And you see how it's sticking together? Sticking together meaning it's not falling apart or it's not too dry. That's going to be right consistency. And remember too that that pork is going to also leach out, let out a little bit of its own moisture as well. So you don't want that to be soggy. So it's, it turned it, that consistency is just perfect. Okay. So I'm going to pan this up, if you will, and get it ready to cool it down a little bit.